All right, I'm going to go over a lot of the core basics of Combat Medic today. Um, a lot of times in Combat Medic, you will uh, see it referred to as Medium Assault. And that is because as long as you're using the heal ability, um, you're going to give yourself over a thousand health. So that will um, make you not as durable as a heavy assault, but um, in a raw health output, you'll have more than light assaults and engineers. Um, medics are super great at making the game less frustrating. I'm sure all of you hate dying to air hammers and banshees, C4, and random frag grenades. Um, medics are fantastic at just pulling out the res tool and undoing those deaths. As long as there's one medic, an entire team can come back up from anything. Um, one thing that I'm going to talk about a lot is tethering. So as long as you are active on someone, medic here. Let me take a look. until you back away from the range, that tether will be active. You can go behind walls, and you can even start resing someone hide behind a wall and then you'll still be behind cover and that res will still go off. That's something I'm going to show a lot in my uh, the videos that we'll review. Um, so if you're brand new to the medic class <laughs> there's a lot of things to sort. Uh, the first thing you definitely want to sort out is going to be your tool slot, your medical applicator. At rank 1 if you revive a max, it's only going to have 5% of its health. And then all the way at rank 6, it goes up to 20%, so that's four times as effective. And the revive speed goes up 65%, and the healing rate goes up by 50%. So that's 690 certs, but it's the best certs you can spend. And then the other thing you definitely want is you want to max out the nano regen device. That'll be another uh, 291 certs. And I am actually going to post the document here in no mics if you guys want to follow along with me. Just a second. And then I use the shield recharge field a lot. It's a lot more expensive to start out. If you look at it, it is... Uh, it's about 1,600 certs total. I'll sort that out, but every single cert gives you a larger range and a faster regen rate. So that's really nice. Um, as far as guns go, the default assault rifle is fine, but I recommend the first thing you do if you really want to play a medic is you want to get the terminus because it's got, let's see, compared to the Pulsar C or the Pulsar VS1, it's got almost 80 more RPM and it's, um, it's just the DPS on that's fantastic. It's one of the guns that everyone uses on VS. It's very reliable. It's a thousand certs, but it's money well spent. And if you prefer sitting in the back line, the uh, Vandal's fantastic. If you like single shot scout rifles, it's got a lot of range. You can just pop people in the head all day long. And um, the last thing you definitely want is to find a reliable sidearm. The Bieber is not that great. The RPM is really high. You have to click it a lot, and it's pretty unstable. The big three recommended is the Underboss, the Commissioner, and the Islet. So I recommend taking a little bit of time in the VR range getting used to doing something simple like emptying your assault rifle magazine and then switching right to a sidearm. 
that's something you're going to do a lot, because once you kill two people, you're not going to be able to kill anymore with a Terminus, and you're going to need to switch to the sidearm. So, one last thing uh, you're going to want to purchase is the Nanite Revive Grenade. Everything in the radius will get revived at 50% health when it blows up. If people have Safeguard, they get 250 health and 200 shields and some damage resist. It's, it's amazing. And it can bring up 20 people, totally bring a fight back alive, and you get into really fun situations with the Nanite Revive Grenade. And then on top of that, you can start getting the Grenade Bandolier with the Nanite Revive Grenade. And you can get people up one time, you can get people up again, and as long as you're alive, you can just keep throwing grenades on point, and everyone will come back up and fight again. It's fantastic. Um, so I've prepared a video of a few clips of my gameplay where I'm going to go through it with you guys and just kind of talk to you about some of the core things about Shield Medic and Healed Medic in general. And hopefully you walk away with it a little more about how to position and how to res people. So I'm going to pull up that video here. A little more about the shield recharge field. So unlike the nanite regen field just operates on power, like you use it and then it recharges over time, the shield recharge field is a deployable. So you pull it out, you place it, it can be shot down. It can be blown up by grenades, but as long as it's down, it's going to be recharging the shields of everyone in the radius based on what level it is. Max rank, it's 7 meters. And so this is one of my first classes. I use this the most for just gaining a ton of certs. I just find a nice place, I drop my shield down, and I throw res grenades um, as often as I need to. Um, so on this shield class, I run medkits because I don't have the nano field, the regen field. So I need to have some way to top off my health if it gets really low. And then my implants for shield medic are mending field which um everyone below 300 health heals a little bit it's really slow um and it's really only good at rank 5 because once you get it to rank 5 your shield recharge field also carries this effect so you can be in two places at once and if people are low health they're going to keep getting their health back up but it's only up to 300, so there's times where it's not super useful, and we'll talk about the other combat options you can take instead of that. And another implant I take on Shield Medic is Athlete. Um, Athlete helps me get to where I need to be faster, so when I'm playing Medic, it's all about getting into the perfect spot to place the shield generator or sprinting after someone who's shift wing the entire time and trying to top them off when they're at 50 health. Um, I've learned that athlete is super great for that and I can just kind of chase people down. Um, another option if you're not using the shield regen field is carapace. Now carapace you <laughs> might not roll it for a long time um, but if you do um, you'll be able to basically keep yourself topped off at a thousand health with your regen field. And then you just turn yourself into a full on medium assault. People can't take you down because you're just constantly topping yourself off. 
And then something that's really fun to do with Shield Medic is to play Bionics with, like, Advanced Shield Capacitor. And then you have 100 health, so EMP grenades and revives aren't great. But if you sand on your Shield Generator, you'll just keep gaining Shield the whole time, and then you'll, you'll top yourself off. Now, the other combat implants that are good. Um, safeguard's fantastic. Um, when you're in those huge fights with everyone getting res over and over, Safeguard gets really close to doubling your health. Actually, it does. It increases your health from 250 to 520 right off the res. So that means you don't get shot down instantly by pistols or knives. It takes two things and you become a lot more lethal in the res spam fights. And the other basic kind of like uptime or survival implant is going to be survivalist. Whenever your shield breaks, you just get it one second faster. It's super simple. You don't need to be good at headshots or anything. It just kind of always uh, sticks around. It's some, one of the implants I recommend maxing first for every class, um, but it's one that I play on most of my combat meta classes except for shield because I already have the shield regen field. And then the other combat medic implant that I've been experimenting with a little bit, as you get better at hitting headshots, assimilates great for giving you more uptime because if you kill two people with headshots, that's 400 shield back. If you're continuing to fight people, you can switch to the underboss and maybe get one more kill or two more kills out of that. And uh, the more you click heads, like even if you're just average or below average at getting headshots, that 200 health will be about as good as survivalist in a lot of situations. So if you get like one headshot kill, um, you'll be about there. So that's something to experiment with as well. Also to mention that Assimilate 5 will give you a little bit more regen field energy, which will also help you with healing allies and uptime. So now I'm going to redeploy, find a fight here, and try and show you what I do when I'm playing Shield Medic. Um, I had just bought some stuff with Merit, so normally I place a ton of Ordnance Dampeners, but I did not um, have very many of them, but I think I have some in these first clips. So here we're just in a point. They have C point. They've got a couple people on it, I believe. I'm just going to go res, and I think as I resed him, you saw that I kind of backed up as far away as I could, tried to get to cover. And then you see that I res this guy, and I go behind the wall. So I'm still tethered to him, but I'm in a much safer place because I backed up. And then my shield regen field's in a pretty good position, so when he gets resed up, he's still getting shield if he decides to take the res. And then I res him, and I back up, and the tether is going through the wall. But that's okay, because I started it when I had line of sight. Once you have line of sight, as long as you stay within that minimum range, you can still get those reses off. And so this is the cleanup of a fight. I think there's a couple people going up the stairs. So I'm going to be behind this person here. And they're going to push him. So if you're a brand new medic, you might have saw this guy go down and you would have pulled your res tool and started resing him. But that's one of the habits I really want people to break. The first thing you need to do as combat medic is deal with any immediate threats. If there's someone that is really close to you, that is looking at you and not running away, you have to try and take him out first because otherwise you're just sitting there with a res tool and they ding you. So I take him out 
and I res him. And I switch to my pistol because my pistol is going to come out almost twice as fast because the, the terminus draw time is about 750 milliseconds, maybe 700 milliseconds with the the forward grip. And the commissioner comes out faster. Now the underboss and the pilot come out even faster than that, so that's something to think about when you're testing the guns. So I pull out my pistol first just in case anyone else is following up these stairs. No one is, so I can switch back to the gun. And then this is going to be another example of me finding a cubby and then setting up. So the shield generator is fantastic, especially with the ordnance dampener, and just finding these little places and making them very defensive. So I grab that kill, and then I place my shield field down to start getting shield up. And I turn around, and I place the ordnance dampener. So if they throw more grenades in here, they can't. It does half as much damage. And if that guy was still around to, to take this res, with my shield generator, and him, and my constant reses, we might have been able to just camp out there, people would have got shields, and it would have been great. So here, <laughs> you get to see me run face or a claymore, one of the more annoying kind of deaths in the game, where you're just not looking at the ground and you die. And I kind of wanted to emphasize this death because it's part of the, the new player experience of just dying over and over to stupid stuff which you wish you didn't have but as people play combat medic and they just revive people who are not even in their squad just people on the ground it really helps keep people out of the death screen and if people are out of the death screen and res where the action is they're going to be more inclined to play game and i know a lot of people here in skl our goal is to keep people playing the game, and being a good public medic is very helpful for that. So, another clip here. I am on the high ground. There's a lot of people in front of me, so I stay crouched behind this hill to try and keep people from seeing me and shooting my head. And I'm able to just get two nice easy reses here. And then I can push up with them. And now I wanted to talk about this clip because I did something that I told you guys not to do uh, a minute ago. I walked up to these people with my res tool out, even though they were dead. And there's an immediate threat right here. So I want to reiterate that the first thing you need to do as combat medic, if there is an immediate threat, you have to take care of it before you do anything else. So if I just pulled out my commissioner here, or even my terminus, I had the time, I could have killed him, and I might have been able to see the infiltrator that was running down here. And once those two were up, maybe there was a better chance here. And if I had resonades here, I could have thrown a resonade, and while the resonade was about ready to explode, I could have pushed up and tried to challenge this guy. Um, don't be afraid to use res tools to distract the enemy, because when a res grenade is growing off, going off, a lot of people are looking at the ground, because those are the easiest kills. So I go here, I don't eliminate the immediate threats, and I get dinged. And then this is probably the best example of how shield medics can just print certs. There's just 12 people just hiding behind this rock, and I just drop my shield regen field, and you just see all these ticks. Shield repair, shield repair, shield repair. This is one of the moments where shield medic really shines above heal, because I don't need to do anything but stand here. And I get all these certs. I can walk around. I can 
res people over here. I can hit allies in the back with resonates. And I just keep getting these shield repairs. And then another great thing about combat medics is you're not the first, you shouldn't normally be the first person in a room. And because of that, you can look around a little more. Uh, combat medics should have their head on the swivel because there's always going to be an infiltrator with an SMG trying to get behind you or this LA is going to try to fly across the screen and <laughs> kill a bunch of people with C4. Uh, you're going to see my accuracy is not the best here, um, but the thought is there to just keep my head on a swivel, stay focused, and eliminate people who try to get behind. And that's another big thing about being combat medic and being second in line. 